same face that this world has forgotten. What's up guys? Now, before going into the course with the Wi-Fi battle of the day, I'm just going to tell you guys that I'm actually started a Discord group called The Battle, which clearly is an invitation that I want you guys to join it. It's going to be linked down below. And it's basically it's a way of you to actually, of course, battle me, but also battle other players in, of course, the Pokemon community. The purpose of this channel or Discord group is basically to gather people that want to battle by Smoke and Tears. So feel free to join us, and, well, I'll see you guys there. Ooh, what is up, guys? And, of course, welcome back to another UU Wi-Fi battle with your rules, of course, the Scarender. And yeah, it's been quite some time since I actually uploaded a Wi-Fi battle, so for what it's worth, I am sorry that that hasn't come to fruition. I really want to upload this wife specifically for quite some time. Uh, we're going up against Kiku and his team is as follows. Swampert, Gudra, Hydreigon, Arcanine, Togus and Blastoise. And just from the get-go, since this is a Yu Yu, you know that Blastoise is not going to be the regular form here. It's definitely going to be his Mega. Uh, it's super viable overall also, so yeah, it's fairly dangerous. So uh, with that in mind, it's going to be the number one threat, I think, because defensively it kind of deals with my whole team decently. Uh, I myself is using Pidgeot, Mega Metagross, Swampert, uh, and of course Infernape, huh? And Magneton and uh, Latias. Latias, of course, the default here of this team. And Magneton is mainly here to trap other Pokémon that could uh, uh, that could deal with Mega Pidgeot fairly well. So it's basically to trap other Steel types and retaliate. Um, Scarf's Infernape, uh, able to shake anything, Phaser, Swampert with Self Rocks, and Assault Vest, Mega Metagross. So, from the get-go here, I mean, his team overall looks fairly decent and very, very well balanced. And um, since my team is kind of weak to rocks, since and his team also is kind of weak to rocks, I'm going to assume that, uh, well, he's going to lead off with Swampert. It feels like that's the ideal lead here from this matchup. So, with that in mind, I'm going to throw in... So I do get this prediction right, as it's gonna lead off with the Swampert. But at the same time, you know, I don't know how I want to, of course, tackle me. So all I'm gonna do is Mega Evolve and go for as much damage as I can. And the Hurricane actually is rather abusive in this kind of environment. And it's very, very good to just get so heavy amount of damage as possible. But the Hurricane is not a 2-hit kill. I mean, it's up there, but it's definitely not over there. So it definitely shows me that he has some special defensively capabilities and not physically defensive. And with the leftovers, it's very possible that he could survive the next hurricane. But I basically need to go for it, so I'm gonna go for another hurricane, uh, hoping to knock him out and then win the rocks war. But sadly, that did not come to fruition as Skull is gonna connect clearly and he's gonna get the burn straight on at it. So we are pretty, pretty bad spot from the get go. And um, from here on out, I'm basically going to go for U-turn. I was feeling, you know, I should be in the area of killing him, even with my burning mind. I mean, I'm still a Pidgeot and he still doesn't have an HP. Well, that did not happen. And that was probably a big mistake on my side. would have been better off going for Heat Wave, actually, with that in mind. So I'm going to go to the Latias and uh, basically here go for, try to go for Defog. Let's go for another Skull. Uh, we can definitely soak that, and it's not like that's a major issue. But uh, at the same time, you know... I should definitely have KO'd this Pokemon and get the um, lead off I needed here. Uh, and that did not happen and that's, well, pretty darn bad since Swampert is kind of tough to kill. And it, having another turn of that living, yeah, it's kind of bad. Kind of bad. So anyway, I go for Defog, I'm being very predictable here as my opponent is going to definitely respond to that properly and go for a Roar. was fearing that it would go for another um, Stealth Frost. Luckily, they did not go for that as I'm going to get my Infernape Gareth and um, I can easily, at least from here, go for a U-turn and KO. That should not be an issue to KO him, or at least so I thought at first. But then I was like, no, we all, already done that mistake once. Let's go for a close combat. Fuck it, it's, it has to be done. <laughs> so basically, here we go. That's what we're going to knock out Swampert. He did live up for, for a few more turns than he should have. As Blastoise comes in. Uh, now, against Blastoise, there's really nothing I can do unless, you know, go for close combat, get pretty much those 40% HP. But I feel that Safira is going to be my overall better switching here, predicting uh, either the Aura Sphere or um, the, um, the Water Pulse or Skull to be able to KO Infernape. Well, he goes for Dragon Pulse, and I did not see that one coming, as that's going to KO my Latias. So that's 
That's bad. That's that's a very, very nice prediction. Or basically a neutral player from my opponent's side. We don't see that too often. Uh, so I'm going to send in Dynamos and, uh, well, go for the damage. I mean, what else could I do? Uh, so he's going to switch in Gudra. I do believe I went for a Flash Cannon here predicting it. Oh, I actually went for a Volt Switch. Hey, good enough. Uh, so Specs is not going to affect that since he is a Soul Vest. Very, very clear a Soul Vest. But Creever here, my Swamp Bird, is... More of a specially defensive variant with um, max HP, so I felt I can definitely switch this one in and try to take some hits. As uh, I get the freeze, which is really nice. Luckily, I do fought out directly. I uh, would have been forced to go for a skull there next turn to be able to kind of do something about that. As I get the rocks on the field, which is going to be very, very helpful for me. And as you guys saw there, the Ice Beam did roughly 50 HP, so I can definitely take a few more of those. But at the same time, it feels it's very likely that he's going to go for either that or a Draco this time around. As he goes for another Ice Beam, actually, Ace Beam, Ice Beam. And we take that fairly well. And also, you know, all I'm going to do is go for Flash, going to get as much damage as possible. As uh, while it is Assault Vest, it still does a fair amount of damage, but it actually packs a Flamethrower, which it should have. And um, I lose my magnets on here. Yeah, so that was probably a dumb play, also. <laughs> uh, I was definitely fearing that he was, I was hoping he was going to switch out, but that did not come to fruition. As from this matchup, there's really not a whole lot I can do. I, go f I can go for the earthquake and go for skull, but overall, I feel like earthquake is probably my best bet here, just trying to whittle him down somewhat. Uh, I am not invested, so this Earthquake does a really a whole lot of damage towards him, considering what I stated here. I do not have an offensively activate with this Swampert whatsoever. So, predicting him actually to switch out there, I actually do believe I went for a Draco. No, he went for Draco, I went for Roar. Uh, Draco clearly does a bit too much. I do survive it somehow. I definitely believe I should say somehow, as the Roar is going to, of course, connect, as they always do, as we're going to phase in his uh, Togekiss and... Yeah, I mean, what can I do here? I definitely didn't believe that Draco was going to connect there, uh, nor that he was going to go for it, definitely connect, whatever. But that was really unfortunate since my Swampert is now heavily, heavily whittled down. And it's highly unlikely I can actually make this Pokemon survive. But I can actually switch it out and go to my Sigmas, my um, Metagross, which of course is with this in mind. Um, um, Assault Vest, I can definitely soak a hit from this thing as anything. But he all he all has the Blastoise, and Blastoise definitely can take hits from Mega Metagross, or Mega, from the regular Metagross. And uh, the only thing I really can do here is try to get as much damage as I can, hopefully, as he's going to switch in his Gudra, uh, which is good for us, uh, because I do believe I went for a Meteor Mash here. Oh, went for Sunhub, but alright, I did go for Neutral Play, hoping for the Blast. I was hoping I went for a Meteor Mash to get that attack raised, but that did not happen. As uh, now Arcanine comes in. And I can tell you guys right now that that's, that's not a Pokemon I want to stand against. Um, Assault Vest in mind, sure, but we are definitely going to deal with physical damage here from Arc 9 and we do not take Flare Blitz that well. And I need Metagross for the Togekiss as this battle turns on. So with that in mind, I'm going to switch in Creever. And I'm going to basically sack it as uh, my opponent here is going to go for what I do believe is uh, uh, the electric move, uh, if I remember correctly. But <laughs> wild charge and it does not affect me. So it kind of, yeah, I'm going for the night. Very, very anticlimactic. As in he's not going to go for extreme speed, uh, and I do not survive that, not whatsoever. I'm going to fall there, and uh, my next switch in here is Garrett, and I'm basically going to lock myself into a close combat here and definitely try to whittle down the last Pokémon that are in. As uh, sadly we do not get the KO here, which we should definitely have gotten. It's very, very frustrated. He's going to retaliate back with Wild Shard, and that's going to, of course, definitely will down my Gareth. So, yeah, that kind of stinks. I definitely believe I had an opening here to actually get the residual damage I needed. As uh, so he's going to switch in Blastoise. Uh, now, from here on out, the only thing I really can do is I need to bring him down below 50%. So, I'm basically going to go for close combat, hoping he goes for something weird, like a rapid spin or anything like that. Uh, as um, we are kind of lucky here because that is exactly what he does. So we have a big chance here of actually winning because close combat is definitely a big chance of KOing from this range. Uh, as he stays in, of course, trying to take the close combat, and he also managed to survive with a slither of health. And sadly, that kind of wraps the game up for somewhere down the line there because that means that if the Hydreigon here is scarfed, there is no way for me of winning 
and this could be very 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 dangerous indeed as I'm gonna bring Sigmas here and all I'm really gonna do is go for a meter mash hoping to get the attack raise uh, oh I went for a bullet punch why why did I do that anyway that does KO you definitely gone for a meter mash big risk big reward right as uh, he's gonna send in happy endings which is the Hydreigon and this time I'm gonna go for a meter mash hoping for to get my attack raises go for dark pulse uh, it is not specs and I do not get flint so meter mash is definitely gonna connect here and sadly we do not get attack raise had I got an attack raise which sadly is on 20% chance this bullet punch would have wrapped the game up but instead my opponent is gonna get his happy ending <laughs> and get to win here with the dark pulls and my last remaining Pokemon is of course Pidgeot and even if I do kill it here, there is no way my Pidgeot can kill it. Togekiss. So I really, really wish I had a quick attack here, but I do not. Nor do I find it very viable. But it is Scarf, it's gonna outspeed my Mega Pidgeot anyway. And that's gonna be a GG and a great game to, of course, Kiku. Good job, buddy. So yeah, quick rundown there. I mean, I could have won. I could also have lost. I did lose. <laughs> But yeah, I think I played the game a bit too risky for my own good. Uh, losing Manathon early was definitely unfortunate. It definitely was a decent shit too, of course, it's Toe Kiss in mind. Uh, and even at that, I do believe a few of my Pokemon get a lot of damage onto them that should definitely not have happened. My Mega Pidgeot definitely should have been sacrificed for greater good instead of my Swampert against the Gudra. So it is unfortunate, but at the same time, this is the Pokemon game we play, and uh, it's about getting the predictions right, and I think my opponent was much, much better than that in this game, and it was very, very well deserved of winning this matchup overall. So with that said, thank you Kiko for, of course, this Wi-Fi Bell, and thank you guys for watching, of course, this Wi-Fi Bell. I expect more of these Wi-Fi Bells upload, because now I actually got my own room to be able to record, so hopefully that should help quite a lot. So with that said, guys, thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you next video. Until then, take care.